In this presentation, you will learn about structuralism. According to Encyclopedia Britannica, structuralism as a school of thought developed by the French anthropologist Claude Levi-Strauss in which cultures viewed as systems are analyzed in terms of structural relations among their elements. According to Levi-Strauss's theories, universal patterns in cultural systems are products of the invariant structure of the human mind. Structure for Levi-Strauss referred exclusively to mental structure, although he found evidence of such structure in his far-ranging analysis of kinship patterns in mythology, art, religion, ritual, and culinary traditions. According to Petit, structuralism claims to provide a framework for organizing and orientating any semiological study, any study concerned with the production and perception of meaning. This school of thought has developed through many theorists and scholars across disciplines and is thus become very complicated with a variety of it available in sociological and anthropological discourses. It is important to understand that these are not with neat boundaries and therefore are likely to be overlapping. Most accounts of structuralism tend to portray it as the radical enemy of any philosophy of consciousness. Therefore, phenomenology, a study of the way in which consciousness constitutes a world. Under the influence of structural functionalism and structuralism, material culture had ceased to be a focus of serious interest for most socio-cultural anthropologists. As Lay highlights, the structuralist movement was set in motion by factors including the works of Marcel Mauss or Georges Cangillium had already begun to destabilize the presuppositions of phenomenology and positivism. It has also been stated that two aspects of the structural approach stand out. The recognition that differential relations are the key to understanding culture and society, and that as a result, structure is not prior to the realization of these relations. Although one can easily see structuralism as a universal philosophy in the tradition of the philosophies, with its emphasis on the global nature of human thought, it also can be seen as a version of Boazian diffusionism. Structuralism is associated more with a set of names, Levi Strauss, Althusser, Foucault, and Lacan, than with a clearly defined program or doctrine. It is indeed the case that there are many differences between these thinkers and that each has developed the basic ideas of structuralism in his own way. However, there is a basic theme at the heart of structuralism and it is largely from the work of Levi Strauss that this theme comes. Levi Strauss's structuralism opened the door again to European ethnology. From the new school of social research in New York City, where he spent his wartime exile, Levi Strauss launched the structuralist movement that was to sweep the discipline in the 1950s and early 1960s. For structuralism, any attempt to understand the human world must be based on an implacable opposition to the evils of positivism and humanism marked by the naive belief in the existence of a reality independent of human apprehension or in the existence of a humanity that could create its own world. Louis-Pierre Althusser, a French Marxist philosopher, was also famously known as a structural Marxist. According to Encyclopedia Britannica, for Althusser, historical change depended on objective factors, such as the relationship between forces and relations of production. Questions of consciousness were always of secondary importance. His emphasis on the historical process over the historical subject in Marx complemented efforts by French structuralists, including Claude Levi-Strauss, Roland Barthes, Michael Foucault, and Jacques Lacan, to vanquish the subjectivist paradigm of existential phenomenology represented by John Paul Sartre and Maurice Merleau-Ponty.
Claude Levi Strauss almost single handedly founded the field of structuralism. He began with the assumption that culture was first and foremost a product of the mind. Since all human brains are biologically similar, he reasoned there must be deep seated similarities among cultures. The goal he set for anthropology was to discover the fundamental structure of human cognition, the underlying patterns of human thought that produce the great variety of current and historical cultures. Pursuing this quest, he had spent his career conducting cross cultural studies in kinship, myths, and religion. Levi Strauss was mystified by the intense popularity of structuralism in the 1960s and 70s. Part of the intensity was created by the verbal jousting between Levi Strauss and John Paul Sartre, a debate that began in the last chapter of The Savage Mind, but quickly spilled into the pages of intellectual journals and personified the conflicts between existentialism and structuralism in reigning systems of thought. Examination of Levi Strauss's work not only has the advantage of directing our attention to the foundations of structuralism in this sense, it has two other advantages as well. Firstly, the work of Althusser, Lacan and Foucault is often extremely ambiguous, if not obscure, and is full of the most sweeping generalizations that make their claims very difficult to pin down. Levi Strauss, by contrast, developed the structuralist approach in the examination of particular symbolic systems above all those of kinship and of myth that makes his claims concrete and specific and so amenable to rational evaluation. After his structural approach to kinship, Levi Strauss expanded his search for structure. Moore notes, by turning to the study of myth because the elements of mythical thought lie halfway between precepts and concepts, relying on both concrete situations and the notions to which they refer. Mythical thought builds up structured sets, not directly with other structured sets, but by using the odds and ends of experience, building ideological castles out of the debris of what once was a social discourse. For Levi Strauss, if basic unconscious structures were found in myth, then that might reflect the existence of fundamental mental structures that provide the organizing categories of cultural phenomena. Let us summarize. For modern anthropology, the most influential of the evolutionary theorists was Louis Henry Morgan. While other 19th century anthropologists generally based their work on library research, Morgan carried out field work among the Iroquois and other Native American peoples. Morgan's theories thus suggested a mechanism for the evolution of the family, technological developments, and concomitant changes in the ownership of property drove the development of new kinship institutions. Inspired by Morgan, Egan, and others, the social organization of the North American Indians has continued to fascinate anthropologists. In particular, the matrilineal societies, though not numerically preponderant, have received considerable attention, as well as the Iroquois examples range from the Tlingit and Haida hunters and fishermen of coastal and island southeast Alaska, through to the Hopi, Pueblo dwellers of Arizona, and also the Navajo, a people noted for having taken up livestock herding in place of hunting and agriculture. According to Encyclopedia Britannica, the rise of feminist and Marxist scholarship in the 1960s and 70s was among several developments that challenged the basis of earlier kinship scholarship. American Marxist feminist anthropologist Eleanor Leacock and others brought to the fore the extent to which supposedly holistic practices of ethnography were actually concerned with men only, often to the point of excluding most or all information on the lives of women. The relative foregrounding of men in anthropological studies became less acceptable and women's experiences became a legitimate topic of scholarship. Meanwhile, material studies of so-called traditional and industrial societies were increasingly able to show the political and economic inflections of the private domestic domain of the family. The anthropologist Claude Levi Strauss occupies a unique position in the development of anthropological theory and the intellectual life of the 20th century. In anthropology, Levi Strauss is known as the founder of structuralism, an approach that emerged uniquely in his work. 
In the elementary structures of kinship, Levi Strauss provides an encyclopedic summary of kinship systems but focuses on a central theme. Kinship systems are about the exchange of women, defining the categories of potential spouses and prohibited mates. The unconscious mediating between us and the world, creating the twin illusions of reality and subjectivity, is a theme that pervades structuralism and is developed rather differently in the work of different structuralists. Althusser has developed the structuralist arguments largely in epistemological terms. Recapturating the neo-positivist critique of naturalism and of humanism. Foucault has developed it in a sustained relativist critique of the ideological pretensions of contemporary society. Lacan has developed it in a linguistic idealist reinterpretation of Freud. A comprehensive critical examination of structuralism would therefore require several volumes. However, these different variations are developments of a common theme and it is a theme that was introduced at least in the structuralist form in the work of Levi Strauss. Thank you for watching the presentation. Do like, subscribe, share and leave your comments about this presentation or any other topics you would like to learn more about.